You're listening to Catholic Express, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. young squire sprouts today is the 29th day in the 10th month in the year of our lord 2022 my name is sir lauren Padilla, and you're listening to saturdays with sir roland on catholic sprouts where every saturday we discuss the art of dragon slaying this week we continue our series on the seven deadly dragons last week we discussed the color red and how the color was designed by god to represent virtues such as boldness confidence servant leadership humility sacrifice and wisdom but the goodness, beauty, and truth of that color was corrupted by the red dragon, Kenodox. He is full of pride, and if you missed last week's episode, I encourage you to check out and listen to the battle cry that helps us slay the red dragon. As you may recall, the battle cry contains four essential parts. The color and scent of the dragon, the legendary dragon slayer to coach us, the sword or weapon used to slay the dragon, and the armor used to protect us from the dragon. Today, we turn our focus on the legendary dragon slayer who teaches us how to slay this most vile dragon. Pride, or Echinodox, is the root of all dragons, so we need the greatest of slayers to help us learn to slay this first and deadliest of dragons. And so I chose none other than our blessed mother Mary to train us. Echinodox is terrified of Mary because she is the perfect model of humility and grace. I have prayed to Mary and asked for her inspiration and wisdom, and on the Feast of Her Assumption, I wrote down what I felt she wanted to say to you in the format of a letter. Here to read the letter is Lady Melissa Maderlot, as her voice is more akin to Our Lady of Grace than mine. My dearest guildlings, I am your mother, Mary. Sir Rollin tells me that you are training to be dragon slayers, and this pleases me greatly. I would like to share with you my motherly advice on slaying Kenodox. Perhaps you are aware, but I am often referred to as the new Eve. This is because Eve was the first woman, the mother of all the living, but she fell from grace when she listened to the wiles of that ancient serpent, and it is precisely that wretched creature who was first influenced by Kenodox. In fact, the red dragon is often synonymous with Satan, who is in one of the highest choirs of angels. Perhaps a seraph, perhaps a cherub, it doesn't really matter, because he fell from there by his pride. Yes, pride is the dragon sickness of Kenodox, the red dragon, and pride comes before a fall. That is why pride is the first and deadliest of sins that causes a ripple effect of sin in many people. If you can't slay this dragon, all other dragons will eventually defeat you as well. Satan refused to serve, which is what all created creatures are made for, He said, I will not serve. Well, our great friend and guardian, St. Michael the Archangel, stepped up among the angels and defended our Lord God. His very name means, who is like God? The question is like a taunt to Satan. Basically, he said to the foolish fallen angel, who do you think you are in all your great wisdom and beauty? You are nothing without God, for God created you. Well, you know the story of how war broke out in heaven. But it's important to study that story and to read Genesis chapter 3. For there you can see how Satan uses the same logic with Adam and Eve, convincing them that they do not need to serve God either, that they can be gods themselves. It is also in Genesis chapter 3 where God gives hope to all of mankind with a prophecy of a new Eve, a woman who would one day come into the world and say yes to God, a simple act of humility, and that yes was destined to crush the head of that blasted red dragon. And that, my dear guildlings, is where I enter the story. I am the new Eve, not by my own merit, but by the grace of God. He asked me to be his mother, to bring forth the savior that would crush the serpent's head. Though I was scared and confused at first, I knew the angel was from God, and that I must trust God with this task. So I said, yes, let it be done to me according to your word. That is why Satan is absolutely terrified of me. Whenever you feel threatened or tempted by his lies, please call out to me. I will come to your aid, and the dragon will flee, for he knows that my seed crushes him. You must not attempt to fight this dragon alone. You must seek aid. He is too cunning and too strong. 
Don't be afraid to ask for help. Humility is the weapon we must use. As I told my cousin Elizabeth, it was not my greatness that brought forth the Savior, but God's grace. My prayer of praise and glory to God should be yours as well. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My dear children, I will allow you now to return to the care of your guildmaster, Sir Roland. Be patient with him, as he still has much to learn himself, but he tries very hard to be a worthy teacher for you, and asks for my help often. And if you could, try to humor him and laugh at his jokes. I know they aren't always the funniest, but he tries, and laughter is great medicine for a weary warrior. I will now leave you with one last piece of advice. You will read this advice as my last words in the scriptures as well. My son Jesus is the one true light of the world. He will not lead you astray, so do whatever he tells you. Yes, doing his will can be challenging at times, But here is my strategy that I know will work for you. Try your best and trust in God's grace to do all the rest. With great love and affection, your dear mother, Queen of the Angels, Lady of Grace, and the woman whose seed crushed the head of the dragon, Mary, signed on this 15th day in the 8th month in the year of our Lord, 2022, the Feast of My Assumption and Death. What a beautiful mother we have indeed. My challenge for you this week is to heed her advice. Practice humility by practicing obedience. Pray for Jesus to reveal his will for you, and then do whatever he tells you. If you do, you will be well on your way to slaying the vile red dragon. And until next week, I'll leave you under the protection of St. Michael the Great Archangel, St. Joseph the Terror of Dragons, and Mary, Queen of the Angels, Our Lady of Grace, and the woman whose seed crushed the head of the dragon. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Hey, parents and kids. For our Seven Deadly Dragon series, Lady Melissa has drawn a new image of Mary for all of you. This week, the Training Guild will receive a free downloadable coloring page and full-color image of Lady Melissa's drawing. If you aren't yet signed up for the Training Guild, go to ExtraordinaryMission.com slash Dragonslayers and register for free today. Kids, keep sending your drawings of the dragons by replying to the Guild emails. And remember, listen to Catholic Sprouts every day, including Saturdays with Sir Roland. This show is a production of the Spoke Street Media Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, visit SpokeStreet.com.